In this video I'm going to show you how to use the equation editor feature in Google Docs to be able to present your mathematical equations looking professionally. The first thing I'm going to do is I've opened a Google Doc, I've given it a file name, I've just said using equation editor, obviously that's a demo file, and I'm just going to enlarge the view so it'll be a little bit clearer what we're doing and I'm going to change that to fit. The first equation I want to show you is the formula for the area of a circle, a equals pi r squared. This introduces a couple of features and shows us some of the more generic tools we can use. To start with, I need to go into the editor menu option. So click on insert and choose equation about halfway down this list. This puts a little blue box in place, which is where my equation is going to go. It also gives us a toolbar here for the equation editor. If we ever want to get rid of this we can close it using the um, X button at the end of the cross. Um, we've got a few tools on here that are going to be useful to us. The most important ones for us today are going to be Greek letters and this one here mathematical operators, operations rather. Um, but there are some on here that might prove useful which I'll talk to you about later on. Okay so we're going to start typing. First thing we want is a capital letter A and then an equal sign and we can get these just from the keyboard we just use usual keyboard settings now we want a pi and that's on the Greek letters so click there and you can choose the pi which is just over here now we want r squared we have to think a little bit ahead of ourselves here and know that we want r squared so you go into your mathematical operations menu and you choose this thing here this has got an x and a b rather than an r and a 2 but this is going to look like what we want so we'll click on that now we can type out R, use the cursor key to go forward and you'll see that the cursor moves up above the R into the superscript position. Type the 2, move the cursor key to the right and it drops down again. And there we have our pi R squared. We can click outside the box and press enter a few times and we could carry on typing. It's rather small though, we'd like it to be a bit larger so if we select everything, which we can do by um, double clicking or triple clicking on the, the box, so you know, the box is selected there and I can go to the font size and I can change that to 24, uh, that might be a little bit larger. You'll often want your font to be a bit larger for the equation tools than the standard font that you're writing in because the equation de has a lot more detail in it so it doesn't look that unusual in a document um, and we can put some text above it um, and if we press enter there we can put some text below it um, now the font below is the same size it's 24 the font above it is 11 the equation itself is 24 and the font below is 24 so we just need to change that back to 11 and that looks better maybe that's a little bit large you might want to make it a bit smaller um, one other thing here is that you cannot change the font itself for Equation Editor. It's a fixed style of font. You can't change it. While you can change uh, the normal typing font, um, and we can change that to Cambria maybe, so we can redesign that part of it, the font for the Equation Editor is fixed. The next example I want to show you is the quadratic formula, which is a bit more complicated. So we know it's going to be quite detailed, so let's start by enlarging our font to 24 and then insert equation. And the first part just comes from the keyboard, so that's x equals. Now we need to think ahead. We're going to need a fraction on the right hand side. So we go to maths operations and choose the thing that looks like a fraction. And you'll see we have a small line for the fraction and the cursor is currently on the numerator, the top part. So we'll put minus b, and uh, that's the side of it. And we now got this plus minus symbol. I said we might need this second one, miscellaneous operations. If you click on that, you'll find the plus minus symbol there. And then we need a square root. So again, click on the mathematical operations, and there's our square root symbol. The first part inside the square root is b squared. So again, back to mathematical operations. There's our superscript, so we'll type B, move the cursor to the right using the arrow key. We get into the superscript position, type the 2, move the cursor to the right again, 
and it drops down and then back to the keyboard for minus 4 AC. You'll notice as we type that the bar at the top of the square root is extending over what we've typed and it's really important that it does that so you don't just have the square root symbol around the first part of the expression. Um, we can now click below um, the uh, line on the rational expression. Um, you can use cursor keys to move around here but it's often better just to click and we'll click down there and type 2a and there you have your quadratic formula. I don't particularly like the equation editor in Google Docs because the formatting isn't very nice. If you want to improve the lookout, you can click here and put some additional spacing in. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to do it there. Well, I'll just put it um, in there. And it can improve the layout a little bit, so you can play around with those features uh, and it might help. Next, I want to look at the chi-squared formula. This uses some similar features we just saw in the quadratic formula, the rational expression um, and the superscript for the powers, but it does introduce a couple of new features. So again, we'll just uh, come down here, um, enlarge the font 24, and insert equation. Now, the first character there is the Greek letter chi, not the letter x, and it's chi-squared. So we need to think ahead put our squared notation in and then go to the Greek letters and you'll find the Greek chi here. Okay, Move along to the right with the cursor, put your 2 in place, move along again to the right to bring the cursor down to the normal level of text, type the equal sign. Now we need a rational expression so we'll go to maths operations and put that in. On the top, on the numerator here, we need um, some parentheses but we also need a power. We're going to put that power in first and then at the lower level we will put the parentheses. Within here we need subscripts so we'll need to put that in place so we'll do F subscript O move the cursor to the right to get back up minus and again we need to do a subscript here F subscript E, and now we need to bring the cursor outside, up to the normal level, outside the parentheses, and then again into the superscript position. So I'll just go through that again. It was after the E in the subscript position, move the cursor once to bring it to the normal text level, again to bring it outside the parentheses, and again to bring it into the superscript position, and type the 2 for the power. Click below the line, and we need FE, that's a subscript expression, so F, move the cursor to the right, E, and there is your chi-squared statistic calculation. The final equation I want to show you is the equation for the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. This comes in a few different forms, they all give the same result. Um, but they do present some challenges because of the complexity. Everything in this formula we've already seen in the video, but it's just the order of doing it. So I'm going to walk straight through it, um, and hopefully you can follow that. So, insert equation. We'll select that and enlarge our font to be 24. Go back into the text box. On the keyboard, R equals... We need a rational expression, so we need to put the line in place. On the top, we have this expression. It starts with the Greek letter sigma, so in our Greek letters menu, you'll find the sigma here, and the x, y, we can type from our keyboard. Minus, and then again, we have another rational expression, so we can do the same thing here. Sigma x, sigma, y, down to the bottom, and n. And that's the top part of that expression. Click below the line. Everything under here needs to be within the square root. And we need to do a little bit of planning here. So within the square root, we'll put the that notation in first. There's our square root. We need two sets of parentheses, so we'll put those in. One. And then I'm going to move the cursor along to be just outside 
and 2. Notice that the line at the top of the square root has extended over both sets of parentheses. Right, we'll do the first one. Greek letter, sigma. We now need x squared, so let's think ahead. And there's our x. Move the cursor to the right into the superscript position. There's our squared. Move it back down, minus symbol. And again, we have a rational expression here. So we need to select this option. The top part, we have a squared and we have parentheses. So we should do the squared part first, the superscript. Then put in our parentheses. And within the parentheses, sigma x, use the cursor key to come outside the parentheses once again to go into the superscript position and type our 2, click beneath the line and type n. And there's the first part of the expression. Now the second part is exactly the same except uses y instead of x. So to save ourselves some time we can select all of that, copy it using Control c or Command c depending on whether you're using Windows or Mac, click inside the second set of parentheses and then control V or command V and we have exactly the same expression. We can then just select the part we want. We want a um, Y instead of an X so if we type the Y and then delete the X we do get a slight problem there that the whole thing disappears. So we actually need to go back again and Y move the cursor to the right superscript. Okay and within these parentheses delete the X and replace it with a Y. Um, it's not a problem within the parentheses because the power of 2 is outside so it works a little bit better there. Um, and if we click outside there's our expression. Again it doesn't look as neat. The, the one at the bottom here has been done in Google Docs. The one on the top was produced in Microsoft Word and it's certainly the case that the equation editor in Microsoft Word is a lot nicer in terms of its appearance and probably a bit easier to use as well. There's one last thing I want to show you. If you're working a lot with statistics, and particularly if you're doing correlation or regression analysis, you might need to use the mean x bar, and often you'll need to square this x bar squared. There are two ways of doing this, one which gives you the correct notation and one which is incorrect. So I'll just show you the correct one first. We have x bar squared. They're both under mathematical operations. We need to choose the squared first, which is this one. And then having chosen that, we choose the x bar. Notice that clicking on this is only going to put the horizontal bar in place. It's not going to put the x in place. So we'll click on that. Type the x. Move along with the cursor to the right. That takes us away. It just flashed briefly there. It takes us away from underneath the bar. Move it again to the subscript position. Sorry, the superscript position. Type the 2. And we have x bar squared. I'll just put a few spaces in and I'll show you what happens if we do it the other way around. If we do the bar first and then the superscript, we do x, superscript 2, and then we have x squared with the bar across the top. That means the mean of the x squared values, whereas what we want is the square of the mean, which is this first expression. So make sure you do it that way around. Put the superscript in place first and then put the bar for the mean.